Let's go. A couple weeks ago, my wife, Angel, uh, came home from a long day of teaching. She teaches algebra at the Delmarva Christian High School. And uh, she comes in the door and she said, Mark, I'm, I'm craving a burger. Let's go, let's go get a burger. Without any hesitation and, uh, you know, with unhindered excitement, I was, let's go. And we went and got burgers. Two weeks ago, um, two Saturday nights ago, after Lori Vicchio's wedding uh, to Ethan Wu, um, we went back into town. We, uh, we were in the hotel uh, later that night. It was about 9.30 and Angel said, hey, let's go back down and let's get some Ben and Jerry's ice cream. <laughs> let's go. Now, I thought we were avoiding sugar, but who cares? Let's go. That was good. Uh, And and not too long ago, when when we had one of those uh, 70 degree sunny days, uh, Angel came home from work and said, hey, let's take a motorcycle ride. (laughs) Let's go, right? Our sermon series for the month of April, let's go. Because that ought to be our response every time to the word, to the want, to the suggestion, to the command of Jesus, right? Let's go. Because he's Lord. And when he makes a suggestion and he makes a command, our response, let's go. Amen? The text I want to use to start this series is a famous passage. It comes from um, the last words of Jesus on this earth according to Matthew, Matthew 28. Uh, Starting in verse 16, the the Bible tells us this. Then the 11 disciples went to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. He came to them and he said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Go. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. May the Lord bless the reading, the preaching, the responding to his word today. Amen? Uh, Will somebody say, let's go. Let's go. Hey, this is a passage. Listen, um, this is a passage every church leader ought to have memorized here and here. Amen? Every church leader. In fact, I want to say every follower of Jesus, every follower of Jesus needs to know this by heart. And every family member here uh, needs to have this one etched on their heart and tatted on the forefront of their brain. You know, you know what I'm saying? This, this passage is so full of inspiration and so full of instruction. It's all we need to advance the kingdom of Jesus Christ and to grow our church family for his glory. Amen. I love this passage. Three times in this passage, Jesus basically makes use of the word go. Three times. And each time the uh, the apostles, the disciples respond, let's go. A first time he says, hey, um, I want you to go to the mountain. I want you to meet me there. And they responded, let's go. They went. They met him there. And then he says, hey, I fellas, I want you to go into all the world preaching the gospel. And according to the book of Acts, they responded, let's go. And they turned the world upside down. And then that third use was basically, and Jesus says, now as you go, I will go with you. And that so invigorated them, they were like, let's go. Let's go. May their example motivate our same response in us. Amen? Mm, Let's go. 
the text begins, the 11 disciples went. The 11, wait a minute. I thought there were 12. Well, one of them went rogue. One of them did his own thing. Uh, one of them of him them had his own agenda. W one of them wasn't interested in any church family. One of them wasn't interested in any teamwork. He was, you know, if you're following basketball, he's more like a ball hog. He wanted his way. So he did things on his own. And this one was unwilling to be submissive or accountable to each other. And so he was doing his own deal. You remember Judas, right? And because of, uh, of his selfish ambition and his unsubmissive spirit, it empowered him to make some immoral decisions. And it took him down. But you need to know that this text doesn't mention him. It talks about the 11 who stayed together. The 11 disciples, they went together. They went to the mountain together. Church, it is so important that you and I get this. We have got to stand and stay together. We have to. We, the Bible tells us we have to be one in heart and mind. We have to be one in faith and love and teaching and practice. One together in heart and mind. That's when we can be effective for the kingdom. Amen? Man, don't be a Judas. Because he's forgotten. Let's go. Here's what I want to do in this passage. I want to share with you today four words that represent four invitations of Jesus uh, of which we need to respond, let's go. Four words. Word number one is this, admission. The first invitation of Jesus is for us to have an admission. And this admission, we need to admit the, the truth of verse 18. Do you remember it? Verse 18, Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. What's the truth of verse 18? Jesus is Lord. It starts with this admission that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the Lord of us, that Jesus is the Lord of me, that Jesus has all authority. He is the authority. He's my authority. And so therefore, when he says to do something, we respond Let's go. Hey, and not with an E or attitude. Let's go. No, man. We need to respond with the attitude as if you were just invited to go get Ben and Jerry's. Let's go. Because he has all authority. He's Lord. Man, that's where we start. In fact, I thought it would be a cool place to start this morning. If you believe it, would you repeat it after me? Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Let's go. Here's the second word. Uh, not everything, Bill. Sorry. Lisa, extra prayer. The second word I want us to consider from the text is submission. Submission. These disciples prove their admission via their submission in two ways. Verse uh, 16, 17 says, And the eleven disciples went to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. Now, they proved their submission in two ways, obedience and worship. Obedience and worship. The first, they, they went to where Jesus, you know, to meet him where he told him to go. So they went. They were at the mountain, 
right? It's just simple obedience. Listen, you need to know the first thing Jesus is ever going to expect of us because he's Lord of all. He's the King of Kings. He has all authority and he always expects those who love him, those who trust him, those who are following him to obey him. Remember Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. First expectation is obedience. Does obedience to Jesus mark your life? It, it does for followers of Jesus. But the second way they proved their submission is in worship. When they saw him, when they saw him, he's resurrected. He's back to life. He has conquered the grave and he's standing there with all authority. Yeah, they worship. They were on their knees, bowing their spirit in humility to his greatness, in thanksgiving, in praise, in awe, in adoration, and just, wow. If you're going to buy into the admission that Jesus is Lord, then you're going to be proving it through your submission two ways, obedience, simple obedience. And the worship of him as king of kings. Amen? Here's the third word. And I want you to think creatively with me by the use of this th third word. At, because I'm using these words because I want you to remember the sermon. All right? I want you to be able to take it with you. You can preach it this week anytime you want to. Here's the third word. Are you ready? Transmission. Now, guys, that's a guy's word, right? Transmission. Transmission. Now, I'm getting this, you know, from verse 19. It, it, go into all the world, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. See, the word transmission is a reference to our transfer, our relay, our giving over, our sharing of what we have. Really, the transmission is really the sharing, the relay, the transfer of good news from those who have it to those who don't. Our translation of this great commission, uh, you know it, our mission statement here at the crossing, developing devoted followers of Jesus, say it with me, who will develop devoted followers of Jesus, who will, who will, you know, it's perpetual. I mean, it just keeps going and going and going, right? It's all about transferring the good news from those of us who have it to those who don't yet have it. The transmission. I think it's really cool. I feel like Jesus, I mean, these are his words. It's his last will and testament. And I feel like Jesus here is, uh, he's emphasizing three parts to this mission. Three parts. Did you, did you catch it? I label it this way. Reach, baptize, and teach. I mean, it's pretty clear. Look at it again. Reach, baptize, and cheat. teach. Uh, reach with the good news. Baptize those who are ready to surrender and teach them how to follow. Teach them how to live. That's simple, right? There's our mission. You know, that's why we're, you know, excited about this transmission. Reach, baptize, teach. Reach with the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Uh, baptize those who are ready to surrender to him and keep teaching them how to follow and live their life after the likeness of Christ. Simple. Go into all the world. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teach them everything I've commanded you. Now, I know there's some in the realm of Christianity who would say, ah, baptism's not that big a deal. Did you read the text? It just seems like in this text that Jesus kind of makes baptism a pretty big deal. These are his last words. This is his will and testament. I am quite convinced that this little, these words wouldn't even make the cut. It wouldn't make the speech if it really wasn't that important. Just seems like Jesus made it a big deal. In fact, when you go back to Mark's version of the Great Commission, uh, Jesus said it like this in Mark, uh, or Mark records that Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a pretty big deal. In fact, in Acts chapter 2, when those first people who, who were like, 
They're listening to the gospel for the first time, you know, since the uh, crucifixion. They're listening for the first time, and they're like, we believe. What should we do? Remember what Peter told them? Repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of all your sin, gift of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal, and you need to know here at the crossing, baptism will always be a big deal. Amen? Let's go. One more word, I've saved the best to last. Commission. Jesus said, and surely, he wasn't talking to a lady, I mean, like, sure, surely, truthfully, I am with you always to the end of the age. Isn't that good? Jesus promises, as you go, and, and the text is not, is not, you know, the command go. It's as you go, as you're going about your life, as you're going in, it, with this admission that Jesus is Lord, as you're going about life in submission to the, him as Lord, as you're going with this transmission, mission, right? I'll go with you. You see, it's co-mission. Listen, Jesus promised it's going to be me and him in ministry together. Let's go. Uh, he's promising it's going to be you and him on mission together in this world. Let's go. Isn't that exciting? Let's go. I want to close today with a challenge. Two weeks ago, Adam and I were in Panera having a meeting, sermonizing together, and um, something odd happened. We're in Panera and right in the middle of the dining room at Panera. This guy stands up and says, hey everybody, can I have your attention? And Adam and I were like, really? So rude. Hey everybody, can I have your attention? I want to share real quick, I want to share with you three things that can change your life. This is in the middle of the dining room Panera. Three things that have changed your life. Number one, stop listening to the news. It's all fake. It's a pretty good point. Okay, all right, I'm going to listen now. Number two, re record in a daily journal three things you're thankful for. Just a gratitude journal. Keep a gratitude journal. Every day, just record three things that you're really grateful for. And then number three, smile. Just smile. And he said, I have chosen to do these three things every day and it's changed my life. Thank you. And then I watched. He, he went to sit and sat down. And then his buddy handed him 10 bucks. Uh-huh. That, that was a challenge. That was a Panera challenge. Because it was like, I bet you won't. Uh-huh. Give me that 10. Well, here's my challenge for you today, and I bet you will. Would you start praying the number 100? I would like to ask you to start praying the number 100. Uh, would you start praying that in this place, here at the crossing, a hundred people will be baptized into Christ in a year's time. In a physical year's time. A hundred people baptized into Christ in a year's time. Last year we had 35, the whole year, 35. Would you start praying 100? Now listen, here's what, is, baptism is a big deal. And here's what it represents. It represents pe more and more people admitting Jesus is Lord. Baptism represents that people are being submissive to his lordship. Yes, let's go. And they're excited about transmission, right? And, it, and, and they realize it's commission. It's me and Jesus in life together. That's what baptism represents. Would you start praying? 100.
whether it be 2019 or 2020, or I don't know when Jesus is gonna answer this prayer, but would you pray he allows this church 100 baptisms into Christ in a year's time? Can I get a let's go? Let's go. Amen. Wow. Would you start praying the number 1,000? 1,000. Would you, uh, we only have two weeks to see this answered, all right? Would you pray 1,000 for Easter? 1,000 plus for Easter this year. It's in two weeks. Now, Easter is an open invitation. People are willing to go to church. All you have to do is invite them, all right? So on your way out today, get an invitation. They're really big. It's designed for the refrigerator, you know what I'm saying? Or you can cut it out and put it, you know, do your bumper sticker. Just duct tape it on or something. I don't know how you do that. But here's the deal. Well, Easter service, I'm so excited. Adam and I are going to tag team the Easter sermon. And we're just, here's the sermon outline right here, baby. And everybody coming in the door is going to get a bracelet with the, you know, with the symbols on it. It's all about these symbols. This is the gospel right here. All right. Hey, would you, this on your way out today, would you take as many of these as you're willing to give away? And just invite, hey, why don't you come to church on Easter, all right? Now, a couple things I need you to do. I need several of you to say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create more room, and I'm going to come Saturday night. I know Saturday night doesn't sound, seem like Easter. I know that. Would some of you sacrifice your plans and come Saturday night? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. We need to fill this baby up so that there's plenty of room the next morning. Five o'clock uh, is our first Easter service and then three more on Sunday morning. Invite as many as possible. Would you start praying thousand plus? A thousand plus. That's just more people hearing the gospel. And Adam and I are going to have such a blast walking our way through this outline. All right. So Saturday night, uh, five o'clock, then the regular Sunday morning. Uh, several of you would just, you know, would you come to Saturday night? It's going to be awesome. And then go for supper somewhere. It's, you know, it's a perfect time, you know, on Saturday night. Um, we are not having a good Friday service this year because we're going to throw an Easter dinner for all of the families we adopted last Christmas. All right. Now, if you had adopted a family and you ha do not have their contact information, will you see Dawn Bell after the service back here at the Welcome Center? She'll hook you up with that. They are going to get an email tomorrow inviting them to Easter dinner. We're going to try to get all of our families back here. We're going to have an Easter dinner, and, and we're going to want uh, you know, those of you adopted to be a part of that and take part. So we're not having a good Friday service because we're going to throw a dinner for those uh, people we want to influence for Jesus. And then a fun weekend, Saturday night, three, Sunday morning. Would you pray for a thousand plus? And then would you just start praying, Lord, let's go. Lord, let's go. You promised you'd go with me when I go for you. Lord, let's go. Lord Jesus, thank you. I love this great commission passage. We admit today, your Lord, and I pray we're proving that with our obedience and our worship. Uh, Lord, would you empower us for tr transmission, transferring the gospel from our hearts to others. Lord, thank you for the promise of going with us. It's a co-mission. Wow. W would you bless 100 in this place? Would you bless 1,000 in this place? all for your glory and honor and praise. In the name of Jesus, amen.